Hey everyone, MFT Court here, and welcome to Cube Tales, the YouTube channel where you can find classic fairy tales with a Minecraft twist. Today's story is part three from Hoodie and the Cave Enderman by Tom Garzan and Kate Bush. This is a part of the Minecraft fairy tale series. So let's check in and see what's happening with Hoodie, Zack, and the villagers of Snicklefart. Part 3 Friends in Strange Places The unlikely duo quickly became friends. Zack spent all his free time helping Hoodie fix up his cabin. They fanned bamboo leaves to help fix the roof and protect it from rain. Since Endermen love living in caves, they covered all the windows to make it dark and cool inside. They even went and built a bed for Hoodie. It was his first ever and he loved it, especially once they put a mattress stuffed with soft leaves on it. He could fall into it every night and sleep peacefully, knowing he was safe and he had a friend in the world. After a few weeks, Zack tried to convince Hoodie to go to the cave and confront his old tribe, but Hoodie was against it. No, Zack, you don't understand. They're not like you. They would hurt you and me before they ever told you or the item that they stole. Fine, Hoodie. I will let it go for now, but we will have to confront them at one point, or else they will just keep stealing things from us. I know, but it's just not a good idea. Also, I have no way to defend myself against them. They are strong and quick. Well, then. We will just have to teach you how to use a weapon, Zack said mischievously. Now that the cabin was fixed up, the duo focused on Hoodie learning a useful weapon skills. They had settled on bow and arrows after Hoodie proved unable to grasp the basics of any other weapon. Surprisingly, he caught onto the bow quickly and before they knew it, he was shooting trees with ease. This allowed him to start catching his own food. Normally, Zack brought him meals from the village, but there were days that he could not make it now that the harvest was coming in. Hoodie missed him dearly as he was needed all day long. He spent his days shooting. He could shoot an apple from the top of a tree now even without even piercing the fruit. 
right through the stem and it would drop to the ground fresh and unbroken. He also learned how to fish using his bow. He would spend hours with an arrow trained on the water, not moving the slightest, while the fish calmed down. Once he had a big juicy trout in his sights, he would let loose and BAM! He would have a tasty fish to cook over his fire that night. If it was an especially big one, he had plenty left over for breakfast too. Things were looking up one autumn day when Zack came down the path to Hoodie's cabin. Not finding his friend inside, he followed the sound of the thumping and found Hoodie a mile away, shooting arrow after arrow into a target on trees they had made. Zack was impressed with Hoodie's talent and how much his skills had grown since they had started shooting. He would have to say that Hoodie was the best archer in the overworld. Now if he could only convince him to use those skills to stop the cave endermen from stealing things from the village. Hey, Hoodie! Hoodie paused in his shooting and gave Zack a big smile. Hi, Zack. I've been practicing out here for an hour. How about we go back to the cabin for a drink? I'm super thirsty. Sure. They walked in companionable silence, taking in the quiet of the forest despite all the animals around and the wind blowing through the trees. It was so peaceful out here and Zack envied Hoodie being able to live in his cabin. The bustle, noise, and smells of the village were sometimes too much for him, so he loved the fact that he could sneak off into the woods and visit Hoodie, who he now considered his best friend. Who would have ever thought I could be best friends with an Enderman? Zack thought. Once they had slaked their thirst, Zack decided it was time to approach Hoodie with his idea. Hoodie, we need to talk. Hoodie was instantly worried. About what, Zack? You don't want to be my friend anymore? No, no, nothing like that. Just, the cave Endermen keep stealing from the villagers and it's getting worse. Last night, they took over 50 items and half the villagers are ready to move and avoid the thefts. If they leave, the village will not hold and we will end up losing our farm since we will not have anyone to sell to. My mom is super worried and won't stop crying while she works. Oh wow, Zack. I'm so sorry. That sounds horrible. What can I do though? Most humans hate Endermen and they will tie me up by my feet if they catch me. You know that. I know, Hody. That's why I have a plan. Zack took a deep breath, readying himself to say something he knew Hoodie would not like. I think it's time you and I take down the cave Enderman for good. Convincing Hoodie to join in on the plan was hard, but eventually, after hours of talking, Zack got him to understand. Now they had to come up with a plan. I've thought about this all week. I think I have covered all the basics, but I'm unsure of something that only you can help me with. What is something that can easily trap an Enderman? Well, we aren't like humans, so there's only special ways to trap us. One way is to use a snark bomb, but they are hard to get, and I don't think there's any of them in this part of the overworld anymore. That is why Endermen were able to spread so far and wide. Hoodie stopped and thought for a few minutes. Zack gave him space, knowing he was thinking for the cause. There is a possibility of using super slippery silky string, but it is really hard to get. You see, as Endermen, we love the living caves. The triple S string is only found in caves. That is how we protect ourselves. You can't get to our one weakness if we live right next to it. Zack sat back in his chair and blew out his breath. Well, that makes things a bit more difficult. Is there anything else? Not that I can think of. The best way is to weave a net of triple S string and then gather all the endermen underneath it to trap them all at once. Otherwise, when we catch one, the others will run and we will lose them. Well then, I guess that is the plan. How do you suggest we go about getting the triple S string? It ended up taking a week to figure that part out. The plan was that Zack would wait for a night when the Enderman snuck in, and then he would release Mrs. McNugget, who he had trained to go from Zack's farm to Hoodie's cabin, who would then alert Hoodie that the cave was empty. 
Hoodie would then sneak back into their cave and steal enough triple S string to make a large net. Zack reminded Hoodie to get extra in case they needed it for something. With the plan now formed, the friends parted. Zack to go back to the village to make sure that everything was ready for the trap to be set in a few days, and Hoodie back to his cabin to make sure they had everything he needed for his quest to the cave. Both knew it was risky what they were doing, but they did not have a choice. If the cave endermen kept stealing, the town would have nothing left. Well, that's it guys. Part three is done and we're getting to the action part finally. What will happen next to Hoodie and Zack? Leave your ideas in the comments and tune into Cube Tales next Friday to find out. As always, please subscribe to our channel. The more you like it, the more people see it and the more videos we can make. Also, don't forget you can buy the book Hoodie and the Cave Enderman by Tom Garzan and Kate Bush and read along with us. It's available on Amazon.com for $3.99 in print and $1.99 for Kindle, along with the other books in the series worldwide. I'll put the link in the description box. A big thanks to my own kids, Zachary and Brayden, for lending their voices to make Hoodie and Zach come alive. And finally, a big thank you to Mac Jeffrey for his talented video skills. Thanks, guys. See you next week.